of Hong Kong Trade Development Council, I would like to welcome you all to today's seminar on the occasion of the Hong Kong Book Fair 2012. This seminar will be conducted in English, and please switch off your mobile phone or turn it to vibration mode. Today we are very honoured to have Indian bestseller, author and uh, motivational speaker, Mr. Chaitan Bhagat, to speak on banking, books and Bollywood. Mr. Bhagat is also recognised by the Time magazine as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. We are also honoured to have invited Mr. Chip Chow as a moderator, and Mr. Chow, also known as Tolgate, is a renowned columnist and broadcaster in Hong Kong. And now, without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Chaitan Bhagat and also Mr. Chip Chow, please. Right, this is a very special uh, occasion for this year's book fair. As, um, uh, we are welcoming uh, Chetan back, he's uh, half Hong Konger. He spent uh, 11 years altogether living in a comfortable, tiny, luxurious apartment on McDonald's Road. Before he deserted us and then uh, went into the career of writing. Uh, Chetan was born in uh, India and he went to uh, the Institute of uh, Technology of India. Indian uh, Institute of Technology, the IIT. Uh, he studied management, science, what, and then became a banker. Now you are such a rich uh, subject to tackle. Uh, you are a global citizen, born in India, brought up there, and then went to a, a, a technological college and studied banking, and then you spent uh, quite a while, uh, quite a number of years in Hong Kong, and then you went back to India and start well, you started writing novels here in Hong Kong, and then you made yourself uh, uh, a big name in the English uh, writing world, and also uh, sometimes a centre of controversy, right? Now, uh, we have uh, attracted quite a crowd here this evening, uh, I think uh, well, out of the film, uh, The Three Idiots. Now, how many of you have seen The Three Idiots? Would you uh, raise your hands? Now, quite a great overwhelming majority. <laughs> so, you'll be welcome to uh, ask the Chetan questions either on the film later and uh, or any topics you know, like uh, learning English and how a banker or a, or a business manager uh, managed to, uh, uh, to uh, do creative writing and then build up your fame, you know, unwittingly outside your academic field, etc. And a uh, wide range of subjects, including what the recent alleged animosity between India and China, that sort of things, right? Uh, if you're interested in politics, I'm sure that uh, Chetan can tackle uh, everything, right? Or the uh, rumors that uh, you were not very happy with the uh, director uh, when the film was being made, you know, that kind of things, right? So, and also, I like to uh, talk a little bit about your famous quotes, you know, and I'm curious to know why at your age, relatively so young, uh, could uh, mutter out uh, things like, you know, uh, life is not to be taken seriously, we are all uh, temporary here, you know. Sounds a little bit like uh, some uh, 1,000 year old Indian gurus, right? <laughs> so, I leave it to you, uh, Chetan, and talk a little bit about everything. Okay, hi everybody, thank you for coming. I, I really wasn't expecting anybody to come. <laughs> so I'm very relieved that um, you've all come, and I know you've come, um, Three Deards has drawn you in, and hopefully you'll get to know me a little bit. Uh, but yes, the book that the movie Three Deards is based on uh, was written in Hong Kong. It was written in Central, in Chung Kong Center, where I was working, or at least pretending to work. So Lee <laughs> Kashing, Lee Kashing made a contribution to the film. Absolutely. In fact, I was in Goldman Sachs, and um, we were in the advisory group. And I remember um, 
I remember meeting the man himself, and I remember meeting his son Victor a lot. All right. And um, so, did you do it during your working hours? Your <laughs> yes. Moonlighting for your own so, private benefit. Yeah, I have this thing. Uh, we had this policy called LBDM in the office. It's called look busy, do nothing. <laughs> so we did that sometimes. And uh, you know, one year we were supposed to invest, and it was like a recession, mm. and I did nothing. And uh, all my colleagues were investing, investing, and they lost 50 percent. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the best rating. <laughs> and uh, in my performance review, they wrote like he showed good restraint. That he so I realized that it's okay. You know, sometimes it's better not to do anything. And um, but uh, coming to you just mentioned Mr. Lika Shing, you know I remember him. He has this one quality. He, his office is on the 70th floor, yes. like very top floor, right? Top floor. And anybody who comes to visit him, and when he's leaving, he, he comes down to the gentleman's car to drop him. Mm. Maybe it's a cultural thing mm. to see him off. Like an emperor. Yes. <laughs> That's huge. I'm All not right. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I just found it a very nice gesture, I think. Anyway, so, yes, so that movie um, that you all liked, um, would you like to see a little clip from that? Let's right. have a clip. Okay. okay. So, at least the Kanshin provided enough air conditioning. <laughs> yes. While you wrote, yes? I don't know, I, I like, and the lighting, everything, he owns everything. <laughs> So basically this clip talks about how, you know when you join college and sometimes the seniors tease you and this clip talks about the application of studies. So this boy is somebody who is applying his knowledge that salt water conducts electricity and therefore he does what he does. So anyway this is what I was doing in Goldman Sachs. So, <laughs> Not a great example for young kids here who want to be bankers. <laughs> Fortunately, no kids in Hong Kong try to copy that. Right? <laughs> Is that scientifically possible? I was really tempted to do that. Uh, oh, no, don't try it. Don't try it. Yeah, right? yeah, don't yeah, try yeah. it. You no, in me. fact, you know, um, we had this trick. Uh, you have to be careful. Um, I mean, it, it's not possible in Hong Kong, but in India, there's a lot of train tracks. So if you do it on a train track, if you pee on a train track, mm. I don't know why we're discussing peeing mm. at the book fair, <laughs> but um, just to warn you guys, if you do it on a train track and an electric train is coming, right. it could be um, quite dangerous. Really? <laughs> so use a toilet. Just <laughs> save a toilet, you know. Anyway. Can we talk about literature now? <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, yeah. I'm just wondering if an old man is doing his pee, you know, with his uh, pee, you know, drip dropping, whether that will have the uh, same effect. 
No. You don't have continuous. Yeah, you don't have continuous. <laughs> yes. It's smart, right? <laughs> it depends. And also, if girls do it. Okay, let's get to the next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a very witty uh, scene. I'm sure everyone who's seen the film would uh, remember that uh, scene for quite a long time. This is how the three uh, get to know each other, right? After, soon after they get <laughs> to the uh, uh, university. The course. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, um, uh, the, the, well, the, the film uh, has got what uh, it's quite a lengthy film uh, with uh, nearly three hours. Yes, Indian movies tend to be two and a half to three hours. Yes, uh, a lot of Hong Kong people, you know, young from the young generation, love the film because uh, uh, the social background in the movie, in the movie, parents' expectation out of the young children. And also young uh, students are encouraged to study science and technology and management science instead of philosophy or photography or fine art. I mean, this, uh, many, many Chinese students, uh, you, have, you have quite a big crowd of audiences and fans in China because uh, this is exactly the same predicament for them. Peer's pressure, parents' pressure, or pressure from the state uh, we, the Chinese, are very pragmatic people. Uh, a lot of us are encouraged to uh, go to university to take up science and pragmatic subjects. Now, we never realized until we saw the film that uh, in India, right, situation is uh, more or less uh, similar. Yeah, in fact, you know, it's, this story is, it was my first book and it's a story about my own college life. The guy who's narrating the story is me and I was also made to do engineering because that's the pragmatic way because if you do engineering you will get a job or once you do engineering do an MBA or join a bank and obviously my talents were elsewhere but nobody even asked. Forget about me knowing my talent and then giving up. Nobody even asks you. Nobody even makes you think in that way that what is it you want to do and typically when you do something that you are interested in and you want to do, you do a good job at it. But if you are not interested in doing something and you are forced to do it, maybe you will do okay at it, but you will never excel. Yeah. And that is something that is not there in the culture. India is and this is a rat race almost to get marks and get into exams. And I think that is the same in Asia, many places in China. And I think that's what's really connected. I mean, there are a lot of, it's a fun movie, great. But I think what has really touched people is that pressure to the point that someone might even want to kill themselves or to the point that they lose their self-confidence or to the point that they don't, they give up their dreams for, for being in the rat race. So early in life they give up all their dreams and I think it's just a reminder and I guess it's amazing that the book I wrote was reflecting my own journey because I was basically writing, sitting in the bank and writing that I was also made to give up my dream. Now, ironically, this book itself helped me get out and get back to my passion. But most people don't. And I think that's what, even though it's a fun movie, even though it's a fun book, the underlying message is quite strong and serious. So, there's a, a moment of tragic relief in the film, the remote control plane, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Flew into uh, the room where one of the... Uh, fellow students who hanged himself. Yes. Right? Yeah, and of course, you know... It's, Is that common in India? No. I, I, it, it does happen. Really? Mm. But it's not, like, I won't say it's super common, but obviously when you're writing a story, you, you yes. bring in dramatic elements like a suicide. It's not like there are a very a large number of people are committing suicide, but it is true. Somewhere in the movie, um, it does mention that uh, in suicides, uh, youngsters committing suicides, India is almost number one. And that's because a lot of it is due to the pressure. And I think it's happened in Japan, it's happened in China, where the Asian education system is pushing everybody through one door and not everybody can get in. So some people are going to get squished. Some people are going to get hurt. Even if you don't kill yourself, you know, 